Hey pharmacist! Today we're doing a full rundown of gabapentin. If you have a patient who's starting it for the first time, or if you're a patient who's been on it for quite some time, this video is for you. Let's get started. Indication. Gabapentin is an oral medication most commonly used to help manage nerve pain and epilepsy. Off-label, it's also widely used for diabetic peripheral neuropathy, fibromyalgia, restless leg syndrome, generalized anxiety, and more. For patients, the simplest way to explain this is that gabapentin helps calm down overactive nerve signals that cause pain, burning, tingling, or seizures. Mechanism of action. Gabapentin is often mistaken as working on GABA receptors, but it doesn't. The name GABA is chemically related to GABA, but does not directly act on GABA receptors. Instead, gabapentin binds to the alpha-2 delta subunit of voltage-gated calcium channels in the central nervous system. This decreases calcium intake, which then reduces the release of excitatory neurotransmitters like glutamate and substance P. The result? It dampens abnormal nerve signaling, and in plain language, gabapentin reduces the overfiring of nerve cells. And that's how it helps with nerve pain and seizures. How to take it. Gabapentin is available in capsules, tablets, and oral solutions. The dosing is usually titrated slowly to minimize side effects. For example, for nerve pain, the dose is started at 300 milligrams at bedtime, then increased to 300 milligrams twice a day and then three times a day if needed. Key counseling tips, take it at the same time every day. For example, morning, afternoon, and bedtime. If a dose is missed, take it as soon as remembered, unless it's close to the next dose, then just skip and continue. Swallow tablets whole, don't split or crush extended release versions. This is important to keep in mind. Abruptly stopping gabapentin can trigger seizures or worsen nerve pain, even in people without epilepsy. So tapering is key. Side effects. Common side effects of gabapentin include drowsiness, dizziness, fatigue, weight gain, peripheral edema, or coordination issues. Let's take a second to talk about dizziness and drowsiness because they are the most common reasons why people stop the medication. They usually happen early in therapy or with dose increases. Reassure patients that these side effects often go away once the body adjusts. Starting low and going slow really helps minimize them. Also, gabapentin may affect concentration or coordination, especially in older adults. That's why fall risk is an important counseling point in seniors. Drug interactions. Gabapentin has minimal metabolism, so it doesn't interact much with our enzymes, but there are still interactions to note, such as antacids containing aluminum or magnesium, which can reduce gabapentin absorption. Advise patients to take gabapentin at least two hours after an antacid. CNS depressants like opioids, alcohol, benzodiazepines can enhance sedation and increase risk of respiratory depression, so that's an important one to keep in mind. Hopefully this helps you with counseling your next patient. If there are any other meds you want me to break down, please let me know and I'll see you next time. Bye pharmacist.